Uh, we'll start with the celebration of the 150th anniversary of the founding of Morehouse College. If all those associated with Morehouse could come forward, uh, and of course, led by our president, John Wilson. Presenting this procl proclamation along with me will be Council Member Michael Julian Bond. As the rest of the Morehouse family joins us here on the dais, um, you know, 1867 was an important year, and it's a year in which we saw so many institutions created really in the wake of the ending of slavery. Uh, and these institutions were created uh, to advance the cause of African Americans whether it was in business, whether it was a cause of social justice, or certainly the cause of education. And so you'll see around the city of Atlanta and many other places around the country during this year a number of celebrations of 150 years. Uh, and it is uh, a thing of beauty, but also a thing of responsibility when you can have an organization, an institution, a school last 150 years. Uh, and so uh, it is my great pleasure uh, as a graduate of Morehouse College uh, to have the entire Morehouse family here today uh, to present this proclamation along with my colleague Michael Julian Bond in celebration of 150 years of making a difference. 150 years of having a commitment, 150 years of understanding the responsibility to go another 150 years making a difference and doing the right thing, educating men and preparing them to make a difference in the world. So this is the proclamation, Dr. Wilson. And I know we also have Dr. Franklin. I'm sorry, Dr. Franklin. Oh, real <laughs> and, and and her husband, <laughs> Dr. Franklin, the former president of Morehouse College. And so this proclamation reads: In honor of Morehouse College's 150th anniversary, whereas the Atlanta City Council is pleased to honor Morehouse College as it celebrates its 100. And 50th anniversary and a tradition of producing many of the world's greatest leaders. And whereas in 1867, two years after the Civil War ended, Augusta Theological Institute was established in the basement of Springfield Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. Today, Augusta Technolo Technological, or, sorry, Theological Institute is Morehouse College, which is located on a 66-acre campus in Atlanta and enjoys an international reputation for producing leaders who have influenced national and world history. And whereas in 1879, Augusta Theological Institute was invited by the Reverend Frank Qualls to move to the basement of Friendship Baptist Church in Atlanta and change his name to Atlanta Baptist Seminary. And whereas Atlanta Baptist College, already a leader in preparing African Americans for teaching and ministry, expanded its curriculum and established the tradition of educating leaders for all areas of life. And whereas upon the death of its founder in 1913, Atlanta Baptist College was named Morehouse College in honor of Henry L. Morehouse, the corresponding secretary of the Northern Baptist 
Home Mission Society. And whereas, as Morehouse celebrates its sesquicentennial, sesquicentennial, there was a reason why the proclamation said 150th anniversary. And I was hoping that I would not see this word. Sesquicentennial. In 2017, the college continues its long and unique history of delivering an exceptional educational experience that meets the intellectual, moral, and social needs of students representing more than 40 states and 14 countries, a distinguished institution dedicated to producing outstanding men and ethical leaders. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Atlanta City Council, and on behalf of the citizens of Atlanta, hereby honor Morehouse College on the occasion of its 150th anniversary. Signed by me and all members of the Atlanta City Council. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank um, President of the City Council, a good Morehouse man, Caesar Mitchell. I want to thank Councilman Michael Julian Bond. I want to thank, uh, in her absence, Cleta Winslow. Who, she's here. She's here now? Oh, good. And she's here. You come on up too. We, we, we thank you for what you do and who you are. Been a great partner, um, making things happen over in our district. This is a great uh, moment for Morehouse, and it is a great moment for Atlanta. Uh, Cesar Mitchell has gone through the history, but I'd like everybody to just consider where would Atlanta be without a Morehouse man named Maynard Jackson? Where would Atlanta be without a Morehouse man named Julian Bond? Where would Atlanta be without a Morehouse man named Raphael Warnock? Where would Atlanta be without uh, trustee Andrew Young? And of course, where would Atlanta be and where would Georgia be and where would America be and where would the world be without a Morehouse man named Martin Luther King Jr.? It's been uh, 150 years of producing leaders for this, for this city and for this country and for this world. And I, I close with just three things before we turn to sing the, the, the hymn. Um, I want you to know that Morehouse College is still in the business of producing men of acuity. That's, that's higher level intelligence, integrity, men who are honest even when nobody's watching, agency, men who happen to the day instead of the day happening to them, brotherhood, men who know how to love, and consequence, men who are consequential in this world and in this life. I want you to know we're still producing men like that. Number two, we are still trying to make Morehouse stronger. Now, I planned to say it this way because I had anticipated a different outcome last night, but we still need to rise up <laughs> at Morehouse College and get a bigger endowment and get some better facilities and get uh, a better uh, branch of support for our faculty and for our students. And then finally, it was very clear in 1867 that the world needed Morehouse. And it is clear in 19, it was clear in 1967 and it is clear in 2017 that the world needs Morehouse College. So I stand with all of this Morehouse family behind me and in front of me. I stand here with Robert Michael Franklin, my predecessor in this role as president, and these two councilmen as Morehouse men and the rest of those who have been produced by Morehouse College and say onward with Morehouse College, true forever. And with those words in mind, I would like us to link up now and we will be led by, Michael Smith. okay, we'll pause now and hear some more comments. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Yeah. 
Thank you, Dr. Wilson. I'll, I'll be brief. I've lost my voice. But I will always have a voice because there will always be a Morehouse College. Producing men that change the world, regardless of their field, chosen field of endeavor. There's, Morehouse is a special place, placed on hollow ground, that was born and bred here in the, in the, out of the crucible of the Civil War to build men who would change America and change this world. One of the greatest privileges of my life is to be associated with Morehouse College. Every time I transverse that college, drive by it, walk through it, come over there for a special event, there is a mystique and a magic there that is born out of the spirituality of which Morehouse College was founded. God first. There to teach people about the Lord and its evangelism right after the crucible of the Civil War when African Americans had little to hope for in trying to define what freedom really means. Morehouse steps to the precipice of the unknown for the African American. So as they move to educate men that change the world, humanity benefits from the work over there at 830 Westview Drive. God bless Morehouse. God bless all of us. God bless this great institution. There is only one other school that emulates uh, Morehouse's prestige. And it's known as the Morehouse of the North, and that's Harvard University. <laughs> but Morehouse is a great institution, loved by all, and has not only, as, as Dr. Wilson pointed out, not only has changed the face of this city and made Atlanta in part what it is, because it wasn't just the names that he called, it's the individuals who worked through the Jim Crow era that were Morehouse men that helped to form the first NAACP chapter here. It wasn't just uh, the, 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 the school desegregation in the 40s and the 50s that was led by Morehouse men. It wasn't just the student movement for which Atlanta de derives its mythos of the city too busy to hate was founded and started by three Morehouse students over at Yates and Milton. It wasn't just the apartheid movement led by Morehouse men to have to bring that wicked system down. It is the continuation of the forging of men to do good, to do greatness, and to be imbued with the spirit of Morehouse College. God bless you all. I talk too long with a bad boy. <laughs> it's very difficult to follow the orations of uh, my colleague Michael Julian Bond, but I'll try to. Uh, of course, my uh, affiliation with Morehouse College is personal. When I first came to Atlanta, uh, being a student at Clark Atlanta University School of Social Work, I had a wonderful opportunity to work under Dr. Alton Hornsby, who was then the chairperson of the history department. And uh, so I got an opportunity to research the John Hope Papers Project. And of course, John Hope was the first black president of Morehouse College. And subsequently, he then became the first president of Atlanta University uh, at the same time in 1931 when Atlanta University was founded. Uh, I worked under Dr. Hugh M. Gloucester uh, at that time. and. Um, I just love Morehouse College. I mean, it, it's, it's my family, and um, uh, I appreciate Dr. Warnock being here to say that wonderful prayer today. And I want to say something to Dr. Warnock. Um, my parents uh, are members of his church. My father's deceased. My mother's still living, but he just recently recognized her. She lives in Alabama now with my brother but recognize her as, I believe, the oldest member of the church. She's now 104 years old, so I want to thank you for that recognition. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. But Morehouse really puts out good men, good quality men, provides wonderful leadership. I've worked with uh, the past president, the immediate past president, Dr. Franklin, and have also worked very closely with Dr. Wilson, good men good men to follow. They've provided wonderful leadership 
for the men that are uh, in, in the schools today. So congratulations for your 150th, and uh, there'll be 150 more to follow. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yesterday, one of the highlights for me was watching the uh, HBCU tribute during the Super Bowl. And I did not recall seeing anyone from Morehouse being recognized as a member of the Hall of Fame. However, um, it was just so, such a, a wonderful reminder to the entire world of the importance of HBCUs. And just on a personal note, um, Dr. Franklin, and Dr. Franklin, each time I pass your home and each time I see you walking, I say to my children, that's the former president of Morehouse. That's the former first lady of Morehouse. And it's so important because although I am a FAMU graduate, it's important that our children know how important Morehouse and so many of our HBCUs are. And as we continue to, to have this conversation on whether or not they are relevant. I think that as we look at each of you all here today, we know that Morehouse and all of our HBCUs are just as relevant today as they were 150 years ago. So congratulations to you all. And as I said to my son yesterday when I was so excited about the HBCU tribute and he asked why was I so excited, I reminded him that his money, my money, would only go to an HBCU. <laughs> and I can tell you that among those that I listed included Morehouse. And just finally, I see Uncle Maynard back there. Uh, just to let you know how impactful Morehouse remains, uh, Maynard Scarborough took my son up to Morehouse for lunch one day. And a few weeks after that, we were somewhere and he saw a man dressed in a sport coat and a nice haircut and khakis. And he said to me, Mommy, that looks like a man that goes to Morehouse. <laughs> So you are continuing to impact lives, young and old, and I appreciate you all. Thank you. I couldn't miss this opportunity. As you all have heard me say many times, I am a spell house baby. Uh, <laughs> my mom is spell and my dad is Morehouse. And uh, President Wilson, when you said, where would Atlanta be without the Morehouse men that you named? I just want to say, where would I be without Nate Mosby? And so, thank you for your legacy. You. President Wilson, to the leadership of this great city council, distinguished in America as a city council of visionaries, to President Mitchell and to Councilman Bond and to other alumni who gather, to trustees and faculty and administrators, to friends of Morehouse. President Wilson, First Lady Wilson, First Lady Franklin, the world-class Morehouse College Glee Club. We thank you and we honor, we are honored by this day of recognition. I think there were three moments in Morehouse's history that lead us to today that make it what President Wilson alluded to as a game-changing institution in America. You've heard them alluded to already. The first in 1879 when Morehouse College, what was then Morehouse, in its infancy, moved from Augusta, Georgia to Atlanta. Had other choices. Could have moved to another great city in the South, Birmingham, Charlotte, Savannah. Came to Atlanta. Second was the move to Friendship Baptist Church as an incubator. Their intellect and spirit came together in a unique fusion that would transform the young men who would show up for class on day one. And third was the appointment of President John Hope at a time when, apart from Morris Brown, no other of the HBCUs here had an African-American president. Morehouse College appointed John Hope, and he brought a commitment to social justice and intellectual excellence.
He defined a tradition that just less than 10 years later when Benjamin Mays arrived, he built on the hope tradition. And so we thank you and I echo the many warm words that have been uttered today. There may come a time when Atlanta and America no longer needs a school dedicated to educating young African American men for service and for social justice. But that time is not now. There may come a time when we no longer need a school dedicated to the values that our president just spoke of, or to producing young men who are well-read, well-spoken, well-traveled, well-dressed, and well-balanced. That time is not now. There may come a time when we no longer need a Morehouse College to do what it does, to lift the spirits of black people around the world, and indeed to inspire racial reconciliation throughout the nation. But that time is not now. And so let Morehouse College live forever. You know, before I, I turn to uh, the Glee Club, Robert's, uh, Dr. Franklin's uh, summary uh, brought to mind one other thing that everybody in this room should know about. Because Atlanta made history with an expo back in 1895 and a major speech by one Booker T. Washington. What people don't know is when Booker T. Washington stood up and talked about vocational education, about how black folk need to stay in their place, and not worry about the life of the mind, but the life of the hands and service and being servants. There was a man in that crowd, and his name, he was among the only ones not cheering at all. The crowd went wild, and Booker T. Washington late, later made his way to the White House. But the man who was disgruntled by what he heard was, in fact, John Hope, who was a professor elsewhere. And he said he, he was the first black intellectual to take issue with what Booker T. Washington said on that famous day in 1895. And in a speech he did just a few months afterwards, he said, no, I think a percentage of us should be educated differently. And that little phrase, a percentage of us, got morphed into a tenth. And that phrase got morphed into a talented tenth. And I want you to know that W.E.B. Du Bois is most associated with that phrase, a talented tenth. But that phrase started with John Hope went through Henry Lyman Morehouse, who was the first to publish about it, and then was popularized in Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. Morehouse College is the expression of what the talented tenth is all about, creating leaders for this world. And with that in mind, I turn now to our Morehouse College Glee Club who will sing a few songs. <laughs> who will sing one song. <laughs> and then we'll have our hymn. <laughs> have mercy on you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>